Okay, but then I want to answer the question, and I'm going to read the question out now, then God will help us to answer it. Please, on this issue of taking God's word to him in prayers, or a situation where God has passed judgment on someone, especially because of sin or error, is it wrong for someone to stand in the gap and by the word of God on mercy plead with the Lord to show mercy on the person? For example, God has decided to wipe away the entire Israel in the wilderness for their rebellion. But Moses stood before the Lord to plead, and the Lord changed his verdict. I'm not talking about the case of Balaam, who did it for gain, but I'm speaking in a situation where one stands to beg the Lord to spare someone he has decided to kill or destroy. Now the question is, can we take this matter to God? Can we... Um, take this issue to God by his word when God has said I am going to destroy something or somebody uh, I will first want to start with the example you gave which is in the wilderness the Israelites disobeyed God and God said for their rebellion he was going to destroy them and Moses told God if you destroy them Everyone is going to make this of you and say that you delivered them from Egypt and you brought them into the wilderness to kill them. Don't do this evil. That was Moses who, talking to his God. <laughs> Don't do this evil. Repent from this thing that you want to do. And God did not talk about the matter again. And Moses thinking that he has been able to discuss with God and um, you know change the mind of God he now wrote because he was the one writing the story he wrote it that and God repented he wrote it according to his human knowledge after he discussed with God because he was thinking that when God said he's going to destroy them he was believing that the only way God can destroy them is to kill all of them now 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 and God told Moses let me destroy these people let me bring a family from you. But Moses said, no, 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 Ah, let me fight for them. Let me fight for them. And God said, no problem. And God did not talk. Brethren, if you go back to read that story, you will note that out of that full congregation, only two of them got to the uh, promised land. Everyone that God said he was going to kill, God killed them. <laughs> Everyone. All the discussion of Moses, when he was discussing with God, that um, God don't kill them. And he felt that because he has spoken to God Almighty, and he has told God, repent of this evil you want to do. He felt that God has repented because God kept quiet. The almighty God does not argue with fellow, with human beings. He doesn't do arguments. No, 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 he doesn't. Simply what God did was that he refused to talk to Moses about his plan. And he killed every one of them. The only person that got to promised land was two of them, Joshua and Caleb. Even the Moses that was standing on the gap and, you know, Arguing with God and proofing to God and you know all the mouth was doing blah, 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 before God. What happened to him himself? The same people he fought for who he should have allowed God to have just killed. The same people ensured he never entered the promised land. If he has allowed God to do what God wanted to do, what God wanted to do was kill all of them. God wanted to kill every one of them. Then he will raise a family from Moses. So whenever Moses stands up to speak to these people, they will not see Moses as a stranger. They will see Moses as a father. And they will respect him, not in only in the office of a prophet, but as a family patriot. That, oh, it's our grandfather that is speaking. That was what God wanted to do. And you know God has done it before. It started from Abraham, and Adam and Eve. Millions of people came. He wiped them off and started afresh. 
with uh, Noah. And at a certain time, he forgot everybody and started afresh with Abraham. So God has been used to removing every other person and starting afresh. But Moses thought, ah, I'm a prophet. I am standing before God Almighty. Is not is it not the rod that God gave me that parted the rest? See? Am I not the one that God used so far? I'm a prophet of God. I know how to I know how to talk to God. And he started speaking to God as if he was speaking to his mate. And God did not talk again. Could you note with me that it's been a long time that God has been preparing Joshua? Joshua was the one holding the stick and holding things for Moses. And God has been preparing him to take over from Moses. And here is brother Moses feeling big. and He has even the boldness to write in his story. And God repented. How could God have repented when God ended up killing every one of them? You cannot argue with God. We cannot. We've been taught a wrong religion. To think that you mortal human being, we go to God and argue a case out. No. The only thing we can do with God is to go to God and plead for mercy. When you are pleading for mercy, you are not taking up a case with God. You are not arguing with God. You are not proofing to God from the scriptures. When you cry for mercy, you have gone to God for mercy. Mercy cry is mercy. <laughs> Mercy cry is a cry of a nobody who has subjected himself to the total uh, uh, power of the being he's speaking to. So, mercy is mercy. So, the only thing we can do with God is to go to God and simply cry for mercy. Crying for mercy is the only thing we can settle with God. So when God says, I'm going to kill, you don't go and start telling God, no, you said it in your word, we shall not die. Who are you? <laughs> if God says, I'm going to destroy somebody because of the person I've sinned against me, all you can do is cry for mercy. Now God can now decide that, okay, I have spoken the word and the word will come to pass. But it will not come to pass this way. It will come to pass that way. God can decide that, okay, I will not, I will not, if God says, okay, I'm going to punish you, I'm going to end you. You can cry for mercy. And you will surely be punished. But instead of a tall punishment, you will give a small punishment. I remember the time I offended God and God told me, ah, you did that? I'm going to punish you. And I cried for forgiveness. He said, yes, I'll forgive you, but I will punish you. The next thing I started doing was, God, have mercy. Have mercy. I am sorry. Have mercy. Have mercy. And God punished me. But when the punishment came, He reduced it for me. He actually gave me a boil. He gave me a painful boil for some days. Then He let it go. That was my punishment. Or that was the punishment I knew about. If there was another one that came and I never knew about it, I don't know. So, we cannot argue with God. All we can do is cry for mercy. But you cannot cry for mercy when you continue to do that which is wrong. Oh God, have mercy on me, yet you are disobeying him. God, please have mercy on me, and yet you are living in the house of a person that is not your husband or is not your wife. You are with your second wife, and you are crying for mercy. You can't be asking for mercy and still be doing the bad thing. To cry for mercy with God, you turn away from your sin. You believe Jesus totally. The Bible says that for everyone who has not believed in Jesus has been condemned. Everyone who has not believed in Jesus has been condemned. So whenever you are committing sin, iniquity, you are condemned already. But believing in the name of Jesus can help you. Can buy you mercy from God. The currency that you need for everything with God is just Jesus. I hear people say, uh, you sow so that you can be wealthy. Uh, you, 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 you sow seeds so that you can get this. You cannot buy anything from heaven. That's what the Bible said in Isaiah. Come. Come and buy. It is free. Just come and buy. Even you that have no money, come. What is he going to buy with? It's with the name of Jesus. 
So to get mercy from God, it is with Jesus. The only thing we can have with God is to cry for mercy. The religion that we have been taught is a religion I call self-religion. We rate our feeling more than God. So whenever anything happens to us that we don't like, we go to God as if we are talking to our earthly father and start speaking anyhow to him. And I'm not surprised. When human beings have converted themselves to spiritual fathers, we think that God in heaven is like that father too. So we just talk anyhow to God. Unfortunately, the way some of us even talk to God, you do not talk to so-called spiritual fathers like that. You respect them, you kneel before them, you roll before them. But when you stand before God, you open your mouth and begin to talk to the creator of heaven and earth. (laughs) May God help us in Jesus' name. So, to answer the question, you cannot try to argue mercy with God. You cannot change the mind of God. You can only go to God by living right, which is obeying Jesus. And through Jesus, uh Jesus knew how to intercede with his father. Jesus also came from the father. When you obey Jesus 100% and you follow Jesus as you should follow him, mercy will now naturally open up to you. Jesus himself, who is mercy? Jesus himself, who is grace? Jesus himself, who is the intercessor? And Jesus himself, who is also God, will be there. Based on your obedience to him, you will be saved. And you will be delivered from curses and the hunger of God that is available unto everyone who have disobeyed him. Brethren, so the only way to discuss with God is first to obey him then cry for mercy. If you cry for mercy and you are not obeying God, you are wasting your time. But if you go to the scriptures... Study the scriptures. Obey Jesus 100%. Obey Jesus. Look after Jesus. Read what he has written. Before you even say, "Eh, God has not spoken to me. God has not told me what to do. Before you go into that, the one that is written over 2,000 years ago, have you read it? Have you obeyed what is written there? You are waiting for a new instruction when you have not obeyed the whole instruction. You first obey the whole instruction. And the whole instruction is written in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I keep telling people, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you have not, if you want to read anything in the Bible, start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is where Jesus is. Go and read about Jesus. Take everything, every instruction he gave. Every instruction he gave. Take it. Obey every one of them. You will have access to mercy. Naturally. You will have access to mercy. But crying for mercy without obeying Jesus is another religious ritual. It's another religiousness. It doesn't help anybody. So I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Um, so I'm answering this question tonight, but I'm going to convert this to our prayers. You're going to go to God and cry for mercy. But before you start crying for mercy, you're going to go to God and ask for grace to obey Him. And that if there anywhere I am still disobeying you, open my eyes. Let me see it. Am I still practicing religion instead of a lifestyle of Christ? Deliver me from religion and help me to begin to live right with you. That is our prayer tonight. And after you have prayed that, you now go to God and cry for mercy. The only discussion that is a sinner has The only discussion is someone who has offended God has. It's mercy. It's not quoting scriptures. It's just mercy. Just to cry for mercy. Ask for grace to obey him and cry for mercy. So, God bless you as you go into your prayers now. God bless you.